The next area I'd like to focus on in the design accelerators are the tools in the power transmission panel. To begin, we'll start with the shaft generator. The shaft generator creates a shaft by using segments and geometry that connects segments rather than a series of sketches or a half profile that's revolved. The advantage of this is the ability to make modifications on the fly and think about how the shaft would actually be built. For example, I might not want the same configuration or sizes for any of these elements. Instead, I'll focus on cylinder 1. I don't want a chamfer on the end, so I can remove that feature. I want to keep it cylindrical, and I want to keep it a fillet, but perhaps I want to change the size of that fillet. So I'll bring that down to 30 thousandths. And then I'll change the overall size of that segment. I'll change the diameter, and I'll change the length by entering new values. As I input these values, you'll see the preview on the screen is changing, and I get a great graphical display of the modifications being made. The next section, I might want to change the end, so rather than a chamfer, I want to apply a fillet. Again, I'll use the same radius even being able to take advantage of the recently used values. And I'll modify the diameter and the size. I can use the dialog box, or I can drag out values as well. Roughing it into size. And then, being able to apply specific changes after I've gotten an idea of what it is I want to do. For the next segment, I want to change it completely. I can select it in the dialog or on the screen. I can change it from a cone to a cylinder. It will give me a warning that I'm changing the type of elements applied here. I'll update the values for this as well, matching the opposite end. And then finally making changes to this last cylindrical size. Again, I'll rough it in, and then put in the precise values. When I'm done making my changes, I see that there's one change that I want to alter. For example, the fillet that's being applied to this larger long cylinder here, I actually want to be the transition on the other end. So I can just simply swap this over, use that value, and then clean it up by taking the feature off of this end. And I just made the mistake again. Let's go ahead and put it here. Set the value. But because I'm working in this fashion, I get a nice graphical update on what's being placed. I'll say OK. And now I can rough my shaft into place. I'll position it in space. Click over to the Assemble Tools use the joint tool and use a joint between these circular edges to apply a joint. With the shaft placed in my assembly and sized properly, I'll return to the design tab and use the bearing calculator. The bearing calculator allows me to pick from any type of bearing. I can say angular contact ball bearings, roller bearings, I can say all ball bearing categories or all roller bearing categories. And I can see I have a broad selection of options. From here, I can use the cylindrical face to tell it what face I'll be working from. And this will begin the process of filtering what bearings are applicable. I'll use the start plane to establish where the bearing will be located. I can flip it. And I can also use the measure tools to establish what diameter this bearing needs to sit in. If I hit update, it will shorten the list to the bearings that will fit. As an option, if I have flexibility with the geometry that I need to confine to, I can use the calculation tab to help me select a bearing based on the forces, the speeds, the lubrication types, and the life expectancy that's required. In this case, since I have experience with this type of bearing, and I know I can get it to fit in the proper size, I'll simply select the bearing that I want, 
and place it into the assembly. Since I have one, I'll just use copy and paste to place another one into the assembly and then use a joint again to lock it into place. With the first shaft located and the bearings holding it, I'm ready to move on to the next step.